Welcome back everybody, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com and today's video is a part of a two-post series over on the blog dealing with track types and Pro Tools. Uh, the first post there I dealt with the first four types which are audio, MIDI, instrument, and aux. And then the second post deals specifically with master faders. And this video is kind of, I want to sum those up and also dig into the master fader issue a little bit and kind of show you uh, some uses that I found for it that aren't maybe weren't as common when I first started learning Pro Tools. So I have a session here with um, a full, basically a full rock session with drums, bass, kick, um, drums, bass, guitar, uh, vocals, all that. And I've got all, basically all different track types um, represented here. The first obviously being the audio track. This is where each individual piece of audio is recorded. As you can see, it allows for you to put inserts and sends on each track, and each track has an input and an output. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the other track type I talked about was a MIDI track. And if we look over here, we can see uh, this is a MIDI track here. And as you can see, it has a volume just like every other track. But if we go up, you'll see that a MIDI track has no inserts and no sends because all it is is recording MIDI or note information. It records you know, what notes to play, how fast to play or how hard to play them, uh, how long to hold them out, all of that. And as far as inputs and outputs go, your inputs are basically any MIDI input into your system. So I basically always have it set to just detect any MIDI that's coming in. And then your outputs can either be a MIDI port on your 003, for example, to go out to uh, some sort of hardware module, or you can set it to go out to a virtual instrument. In this case, I've got Easy Drummer in this session. So I could have this track simply, this MIDI track play just the kick drum in that instrument, I have another track for snare, another track for cymbals. That way I can have individual control over each part, and each MIDI, um, each MIDI note could be on a different track, so each section has its own control but I don't have to open up four or five different versions of Easy Drummer to do that. This just triggers them all. So that's a MIDI track. And the other similar track is an instrument track. And that's what this is right here, this uh, RNG colored track. And what that is, it's like a hybrid between MIDI and, and an aux track. Uh, since a MIDI has no audio, it has to be sent somewhere else to trigger any audio. This is kind of a hybrid. So as you can see, it has a volume control. But uh, as opposed to a MIDI track, this actually has inserts. So on this one, I have Easy Drummer. So if we go over into our edit window, you can see down here at the bottom, this is my uh, instrument track. There's lots of MIDI information here, uh, but the audio is also actually being played back through this track as well. So uh, it does both at the same time. So if you only need one track, like there I have just all my drum parts in that one, that one instrument track. Now I've recorded all these to audio tracks, so we're gonna hide those because we, we actually don't need those anymore. Let's see, hide and make it active. Okay, the other track form is an, is an aux. Now I've got several here, these here are for reverbs and delays. They're being sent from different audio and uh, other aux tracks uh, via ascend, like this uh, B3 is being sent to the reverb, which is coming in here. Uh, also over here, I've got an aux track, actually for my vocal that I'm doing right now. This is set to uh, my analog one input on the 003 and as you can see my vocals coming through and what's unique about this is the vocal you hear that uh, whether or not the track is playing or not because an aux always passes audio through and I can come in here and put uh, effects and sends and things on here if I wanted to as well so auxes are good for um, effects and then also for grouping things together like over here to the left we have all the drums coming through this aux right here now the final thing I want to talk about is master faders uh, typically in a session you'll see someone using a master fader at the very end and you'll have things like a compressor and an EQ uh, and a limiter on the final track. Now what's unique about that is master faders are different than aux tracks. Uh, they process everything pre-fader. So as I bring this down on this master fader, as you can hear the volume goes down, but these plugins uh, aren't affected by that volume change. So this right here is a dither plugin and as you can see it's going to dither down to 16-bit. As I bring this fader down uh, the dither remains at the same volume, which is really important when you're dithering. You want that dither to remain constant, uh, particularly at the end of a song. Say you're doing a long fade out where you pull the fader down slowly at the end of the song. Uh, if you don't have that on a master track, then the dither gets turned down with it, and that's usually not a good thing. Um, on the flip side, as you can see here, I've got all my tracks routed, all the outputs routed to a submix bus, which is coming to this aux track here, as you can see. There's submix coming in. Now that's where I have my compressor and limiter, and then that's going out the the, um, the master output, which is then the only thing on this master track is uh, the dither. 
Now the reason I do that is that these plugins on an aux track are post fader. So as, as I bring down the fader, if I were to fade out on this, then everything would be smooth. If I were to put this limiter and compressor on the master track, as I do a fade out there, it's lowering the input into these into these compressors and limiters. So it would actually change the way it's compressing, which would make that fade out sound kind of, um, if you thought of a compressor as the glue that holds the mix together, as you turn down the input to that, it's not compressing as much, so your mix would kind of come unglued. So I do all my compression on an aux track here that then is fed out to the master. Now, if you're familiar with much of Pro Tools, then you'll see I have another master here uh, before the submix. Now, what this is monitoring is that submix bus. And the reason I do that is I want to know if this bus is clipping. And the best way for me to show that to you is to actually come over to the drums. So here I have all the drums. They're routed out of a drum bus coming into this aux track here. As you can see, they're coming into the drums, uh, this drum submix, and then going out uh, to the rest of the chain. Now, as you can see, I've got a master track here as well. Now, why is that? Well, I'm compressing and EQing these drums, as you can see here. So we'll, uh, we'll solo these up. And when I hit play, you'll see uh, that everything's coming through here. Now let's say um, I didn't have this master here. Ignore that master for a second. And let's say I turn up all the drums. Um, we'll group them all together. And as I turn these up, it's getting louder in this drum mix here, right? Let's take a listen. Now this is really important. This is why I use a master. Had I not had a master here, I would have all these turned up. It would sound okay. I wouldn't be able to maybe hear the clipping, but as you can see here, that drum bus that I have these routed to is clipping. But if this was gone, all you would see is these tracks are playing. Okay, and you would see that none of, none of these tracks are clipping. And over here, the mix bus that I'm going through, this aux, isn't clipping either because I've got a compressor here that's turning all that down. What you don't see is that internally on this bus itself, there's clipping going on. And you don't see it because this meter and this fader is post, uh, is post the compressor and EQ here. So the signal comes through this EQ and compressor, then comes down through the fader. So it gets turned down here before it gets here. And the result is that you don't know that it's clipping. And that's huge. You could hear some, you know, if a lot of that's going on, it'll start to affect your, affect your mix and degrade things. So whenever I'm going through a bus with, you know, several things, I'll bring up a master fader and it's simply here just to meter it, just to watch it and make sure that it's not clipping. The other thing is if it is clipping, say like this example, if you turn down the master fader, it's actually not going to affect your bit rate at all or your resolution. It'll actually just turn it down as if you were turning down all these faders together. So we can do it here. And by adjusting that one fader, I can bring that down back out of clipping. In an emergency, if you're at the end of a mix and you just need to tweak a few things. So sorry for the little bit longer video. This is kind of an in-depth topic that I wanted to discuss that uh, I discovered relatively recently. Uh, and doing some research on master faders and how they're used. So if you have questions, uh, certainly leave a comment on the blog. It's uh, homestudiocorner.com. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.